Okay, so in this talk, I will talk about a thin client application framework that may be used to develop network-centric computing applications based upon a thin client programming model. And I will go into the details of what I mean about network-centric computing, about a thin client programming model, and a thin client application framework. This is joint work done with my colleagues listed here at the IBM T.J. Watson Research Center. I want to point out that my colleagues were the ones that initially developed the ideas as well as the prototype implementation. I joined this project just a few short months ago with the objective of adding to and refining and enhancing the work. And before I go on, I do want to point out that prior to joining this group, I was in a totally different area. I was in parallel processing, doing computer research on computer architecture, shared memory systems, cache coherence protocols, parallel I.O. subsystems, performance evaluation. So this is a totally different area for me. And, and these posters here really metaphorically symbolize the learning curve that I've been riding for the past few months. And I'm really excited, I'm learning a lot, and it's really wonderful to be in this field during this time. I will begin by discussing the motivation for this work, including some background information on traditional client-server systems, as well as the two-tier architecture associated with client-server. However, there are some limitations associated with this two-tier architecture, so I would then describe a three-tier architecture that has been proposed within the past few months to address some of the limitations imposed by this two-tier architecture. Next, I will discuss the thin client application environment that layers very well on top of this three-tier architecture. I will also discuss the thin client application and the thin client programming model. And finally, I will discuss in some detail the thin client application framework, or TCAF, that is designed to enable rapid and robust application development based upon a thin client programming model. And finally, I will give the current status of this work. So now let's talk a little bit about the traditional client server model. As I said earlier, this is a two-tier ar architecture where at tier one there's the client and tier two is the server. Now the client usually contains the user interface as well as the bulk of the application logic. And the server usually contains legacy data systems and data management software that's used to manage that data. The client in this type of architecture usually runs on a fat PC, that is a PC with all of the bells and whistles, or a workstation or something of that sort. The client server architecture is usually used in a network centric type of environment. Now yesterday we heard this mantra about 50-50 by 2020. Well I do work for a very large multinational information technology company and the mantra of the CEO is network-centric computing. So in this network-centric computing environment, typically there are a few servers, and relatively speaking, there are quite a few clients. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the server, I'm sorry, the client usually houses all of the application code. So you run into a problem if you have several PCs, all with applications running on them. There's a problem with software management. And I want to discuss that in a little detail now. The problem is that anytime there's a need to do a software upgrade, you may have all of these clients that you have to upgrade. And, and that can become a management nightmare. If it would be possible to migrate the applications to the server, then that would sort of minimize the management manageability issues associated with software upgrades and software maintenance. In addition to that, the Gartner Group, which is a marketing research firm that does research on many industries, including the information technology industry, they did a study and saw that over a five-year period, the annual cost of PC maintenance was between five to $10,000 per year, and this could be very expensive 
in a client-server environment where you have many clients and a relatively smaller amount of servers. So one solution to this two-tier traditional client-server methodology is to have a three-tier architecture where you take tier one of the client-server architecture and divide it into two tiers. And in this particular architecture, tier one has the presentation layer, which is essentially the user interface, typically a graphical user interface, and maybe some small amount of it essential application logic. Tier two contains the bulk of the application logic, and this application logic or business logic is associated at the server. And again, tier three, the legacy data systems and data management. So this is a three-tier architecture that has been proposed only in the past few months to address the issues and the problems asso associated with software manageability in the two-tier client-server model. Now the thin client environment layers naturally on this three-tier architecture because in a thin client environment, the client again has just the graphical user interface and some essential application logic as shown here at tier one. And eighth as shown here is an application front end. And I will go into some detail about what an eighth is later in the talk. And again, tier two has the essential application logic as well as some of the serv services needed to bind to particular services that applications may need. And again, tier three has the legacy data systems. So using this three-tier architecture, it is possible to rewrite code or migrate code or write code initially in a three-tier environment. Uh, in the two-tier environment, again, the client server, traditional fat PC, and you can rewrite the code so that it runs in a three-tier environment where tier one is the thin client because the bulk of the application logic is now at the server of tier two. And again, the promise of this, the reason why this is so exciting and, and many people are catching on to this three-tier architecture is the promise of Java, which is write once, one, run anywhere. And with that in mind, it's possible to write an application that's independent of the hardware platform as well as the operating system. So you do not have to really depend upon the operating system APIs as well as many of the other operating system functions. This thing client environment is ideal to be run on network PCs. You've heard a lot about network PCs. In this type of environment, tier one, the client, would run on this type of PC. However, it is not necessary that it runs on this type of PC. You can still run it on a fat PC if you so desire. Applications can be developed in this thin client environment called th thin client applications. Shown here at the top are the traditional client server applications where you have the graphical user interface and the application logic at the client and the data storage, the data management is at the server. You can break this application up so that the bulk of the application logic is at tier two, the business logic, and you may have a proxy server to actually access the data located at tier three, the, the database servers. And again, this three tier thin client application model works, and it works very well. It has many advantages if you use Java, which is the focus of the TCAF work that I will discuss later. So now I'll talk about the thin client programming model. There are several key aspects to this thin client programming model. And one is the fact that the client downloads application front ends or apes from the network. This helps with software manageability because the application is now stored at the server and it is possible to upgrade the software at the server. It is possible to move the software, move the application logic from one server to another and not impact 
the client. And keep in mind that in a client-server type of environment with network-centric and computing, the bulk of your hardware um, resides at the client. You have many more clients than servers, so the cost associated with modifying anything at the client is, is minimized in this thin client programming model. Another aspect of the thin client programming model is the fact that application front ends rely only on services found on a network servers. This has the advantage of flexibility. And it's flexible in the sense that it may be possible that you need a service that could be provided by several servers and if one server is fully loaded, then you can request to go to another server. So it's flexible in the sense that the actual server that you bind to can be adaptable. You can integrate that into the framework that I will discuss a little later. Another aspect of the thin client programming model is the fact that the location of the services are bound as late as possible. And this has the advantage of fault tolerance. What happens if you attempt to bind to a server that breaks down for whatever reason? Um, if you do not have some type of recovery mechanism, you could be dead meat, okay? If you have a recovery mechanism or some type of fault tolerance mechanism of going to another server in the event of a network storm or some type of failure, uh, then you can get away from any potential problems with a faulty server when you need the services provided by that server. Now, there are many client-server type of applications that one may think of using a three-tier architecture. When it comes to mind is a web browser. But there's a problem with the web browser if you use a URL if you use a specific URL, then you are binding to one server or to a particular server. If that server goes down, you could have a problem. If you have some type of recovery system, then you can migrate that request to another server. Another key aspect to the thin client programming model is the fact that applications accessed by the client may interact within the confines of the workspace. Now keep in mind the application front end, or the eighth, is a very small piece of code, okay? And it may, be, it may be the case that the application may require many services, and it therefore may have to download many apes from the server. These apes can communicate with each other. The assumption is if they do that, it's within the confines of a workspace, okay? And the thin client application framework will enable application developers to develop rapid and robust applications based upon this thin client programming model. It is an object-oriented framework for developing applications using this model. Okay, so I will spend some time now going into some details about the thin client application framework, or TCAF. Why frameworks? Well, there has been some work done that has shown that frameworks uh, is a promising way of achieving widespread use and reuse of software architecture. TCAF itself can facilitate the bringing together of all of the pieces of the application, from the application front ends running on the client to the services found on the servers. Okay, so the whole range from the client to the server. TCAF can facilitate uh, the use of all of the services and all of the methodologies associated with application development in this type of environment. TCAP is a collection of components and related services that enable this application development using the thin client paradigm. And as you can see here, there are three basic modules associated with TCAP, and that is the client workspace, the application specific services support, and the TCAP infrastructure services. Now I'll discuss a little bit about the thin client workspace. The thin client workspace is essentially a container that contains four key objects or four key entities. The user profile object, 
the set of apes, the virtual environment manager object, as well as the controller object that's used to provide system services to the apes, as well as the workspace itself. The user profile object contains essentially user information, such as the, the username, the user ID, the last time the user logged on, that type of thing. Also contained in this user profile object is an authentication object or an authorization object that allows the user to access the numerous APHs associated with the actual thing client application, as well as uh, it allows the user to say, I am who I say I am when it attempts to log on to the thing client workspace. The application front ends, again, a, s a small piece of essential application logic as well as the graphical user interface that the user then uses to, to begin and to execute the actual application. The virtual environment manager is one of the fundamental entities or the fundamental objects in this workspace client. When an AFE attempts to access any service, it can only do so through the virtual environment manager and the internal directory client that's associated with the VIM or the virtual environment manager. For example, if an application front end or AFE requests a specific service, then it will send a request uh, using the internal directory client to the associated TCAF directory service, which I will talk about a little later. That TCAF directory service will then respond by sending a service stub location back to the VIM. And the VIM then takes that service stub. And a service stub is essentially a piece of uh, a code that allows the client to communicate with the server. So it will take that service stub, instantiate it, and pass a reference back to the AFE. Similarly, a similar type of thing occurs with the code service. There are two basic services associated with the VIM. The location server, that is the actual uh, internal directory client that's used to locate a specific service. Within TCAP, you can request a service just by stating the, the service name and some set of attributes. And then it's assumed that the name and the attribute is enough to actually locate a server or a series of servers. And then the server stubs for those particular servers are then passed back to the VIM, which then passes a reference back to the AFE. A similar thing occurs with the code server. In fact, the code server is used to download the application front ends from the network. The code server is initialized when the actual workspace is initialized, and that initialization occurs when the user logs on. There's also a set of controller objects that are used to control system services such as printing, data storage, error logging, et cetera. Those controller objects are accessed by all of the apes within the, er the workspace. So these objects are shared by all of the application front ends. The AFE loader launcher essentially uh, communicates with the code service when there is a request for a specific ACE, AFE. And AFEs are requested on demand by the user, or they are downloaded when the workspace is downloaded if the AFEs have been used previously. Another module associated with TCAF uh, are the application-specific service support. Application front ends are very small pieces of code, as I said earlier. So let's say, for example, uh, an application front end editor is loaded, and the user is using that editor. And the user then finds the need to, to use a spell checker. The spell checker could be closely integrated with the editor in such a way that the AFE of the editor will request a specific spell checker. That spell checker is then downloaded across the network to the actual client workspace. And finally, the TCAF infrastructure services is a module that facilitates the directory services that I discussed earlier, the, the location service and the code server. Now, it is assumed in TCAF that 
the TCAP itself does not have a physical directory service. It, it is assumed that it used directory services such as LDAP, which is lightweight directory access protocols, and that the directory service within TCAP is essentially a client to an LDAP server or whatever server you choose to use. And similarly with the code server, the TCAP code server is essentially a client to whatever code server you choose to use, for example, Marimba. So that essentially, in a nutshell, is what the thing client application framework is all about. I want to go discuss a little bit more about some of the uh, services that may be provided, or uh, may be used by TCAF, but is not necessarily a part of TCAF itself. And, and that includes, for example, an authentica authentication server. I did discuss earlier the fact that there was an ob authentication object or authorization object that's part of the client workspace that essentially has the user access information for the apes and some type of authentication information. And if a server or if an application developer wants to use that authentication object, then it is assumed that the actual client, that the actual application or any service provider will use that authent authentication object. It is not necessary, but it can be used. And if it is used, then it is possible to facilitate a single logon structure. That is, the user logs on only once within the client workspace, and it does not have to keep logging on to these various servers to authenticate itself. The servers themselves can use the authentication object to do the authentication and the access rights protection. Okay, so I discussed the network-centric computing environment. I discussed the two-tier architecture and some of the problems associated with that, and the three-tier architecture that has been recently proposed to solve some of the limitations associated with the two-tier architecture, the thin client environment that layers very naturally on top of this three-tier architecture, the thin client programming model, and TCAF, which is essentially a framework that facilitates rapid and robust application development based on these models. And, and so now I would like to discuss the current status of this work. How many of you know what AlphaWorks is? Okay, AlphaWorks is essentially a, a web page that anyone within the world who has the URL, which is shown here, uh, can access and download code written by IBM developers and test it out. Okay, TCAF is available from AlphaWorks. Okay, so if any, any of you are interested in more details about TCAF, if you're is interested in testing it out, feel free to access the URL shown here, download TCAF, test it out, and send some comments back to me, good, bad, whatever. I'd be more than happy to hear from you. My email address is shown here. TCAF has also been integrated with San Francisco, which is an IBM product now. It's a business object framework, which is what BOF is, that facilitates application development of commercial business applications. This integration demo was done at the Object, Manag Object Management Group Conference in March of this year. It ran on a net station, IBM net station, as well as a PC. Okay, so that's the current status of TCAF. And that concludes my talk. This is an alternative to o OMG's CORBA, or uh, how would you compare it to DCOM, or DCE, or any one of those distributed uh, middlewares? TCAF, uh, the implementation that, that we currently have uses RMI. So the communication is essentially based, it's 100% is, is Java. Communication is, with, is via remote method invocation, which is Java. With all the applications that are stored on the server, and if you're running it over a network, how do you stop the problems 
that I would think would encounter naturally when you are having so much information being run over a network all the time. Does this not make, make the network very slow? You raised a performance issue. This is a prototype implementation, and performance will be looked at in great detail in the next version. Hi, I'm Jean Hanna. I'm from Victoria, BC, uh, Canada. And actually, we've been working with a, a product from Citrix, which is uh, using the ICA protocol. And what it is is it allows, it allows we call it multi-user NT or virtual NT. So if you have, a, I know it's Microsoft specific, but uh, if you have an NT uh, server, you actually, the display actually is the only thing that gets sent down the wire to the user. And from the user, what gets sent back is just mouse clicks and keystrokes. So the ICA protocol is incredibly uh, efficient over slow bandwidth. So I can telecommute from home. I don't like to, but if I wanted to, I could actually use a 14.4 modem, and or I could use a 28.8 modem, which is actually quite impressive in terms of speed. So for example, the application Microsoft Exchange, uh, it, it's actually, I was interested in the three client models. So you have the Microsoft server, the exchange server for mail, and then you have the client that's generally accessing it. And then you have the third, the ICA client, which, which actually kind of, or ICA protocol that's used to just go over the wire. So it's actually, the, the client at the very end is so thin. It's amazing. So I can have a DOS machine with this very thin client. All I need is TCP IP uh, ability and I can, from home, use a very pathetic PC to access NT at work, and it's as if I'm at work. So uh, are you aware of the, how does this relate to what you're doing? You, you, what you discussed was a very thin client paradigm, as opposed to a thin client paradigm. <laughs> we, have, we have looked into that. In fact, that's some, one thing that we're going to be looking at in the future, how do you make the thin client thinner and, and that may be some, some performance, there are some performance issues associated with that. I know you said you only had to use a 14.4 modem. Oh, that's pretty good.